and peace to each one of you who are here with us outside and for those of us online. My name is Marty Hazelrig and I'm the pastor here at Oak Ridge Presbyterian Church. And I want to extend a special welcome to each of you as we gather for worship outside in God's beautiful creation and online as well. And a welcome to those who will be watching this later in the week as well. We invite you to participate in this service. Um, you can, we have sent the order of worship out electronically. Um, you can pull it up on your phone. Um, but we invite you to participate during the call of worship.
while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for each one of us. So each Sunday we pause to tell the truth, to tell the truth about our broken world, to tell the truth actually about the brokenness within each one of us. We do so two ways. First, together as we read the printed prayer of confession, and then individually as we lift our sin before God. So let us pray in one voice. Please join me as you are able. It is true we break your commandments, God of our lives. Much worse, we break your heart. When we point the finger at those who are different from us, when we gossip about friends and neighbors, when we think everything is all about us, forgive us, loving God, we pray. We long to know your ways, so open our ears to hear those words we always ignore. We search for you each day. So open our eyes to your wonders, so we may see them anew. Fill our hearts with the presence of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hear our silent prayers of confession. Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments 
teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard it. You have heard that it was said of those ancient times shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hellfire. So when you are offering your gift to the altar, if you remember that a brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while they are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you paid the last penny. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some of you know that a few weeks ago I started a um, doctorate of ministry. It is a practical doctorate, and it's been something I've wanted to do for about 10 years now. Now, one of my classes this fall is called Introduction to Christian Leadership. And one of the things our professor is trying to get us to understand, those of us, some of us who have been in ministry for a little while, is that your leadership depends on where you stand. So we are being invited, well, not invited, we are being encouraged strongly based on grade to actually um, do lots of reading and writing. And the book we had to read last week was called Invitation to Lead, Guidance for Emerging Asian American Leaders by Paul I said that incorrectly, so it's Paul. I was reading this earlier last week, and I was like, okay, what do I have to learn from Paul? His context is completely different from mine. He's had different experiences. Continue like this. 
either we go to counseling or this marriage is over. And so Paul agreed and he goes to counseling and they were there a couple of sessions and the counselor said, Paul, why don't you come see me by yourself? Paul did. At the age of 42 years old, Paul finally began to deal with the anger in his heart. The anger that he had at not knowing his mother. He started to deal with it. And when he dealt with it, it was a long process. He says he still is dealing with it today, 30 years later. But dealing with his anger actually helped not only him, but the people and the churches and the organizations he ministered to, especially to those he loved, his family. Richard Moore, the Franciscan priest, Jesus says, actually, we will be liable to the council. 
there are parts of the commandments that we are supposed to kind of make a fence around to mark off. Because when we do this, we realize that life is a little bit better and we obey Jesus more fully when we obey them. So when you put a fence around a house, you put a fence around the house to protect it. And when we put a fence around Torah, then we obey those commandments. And when we obey those commandments, you're less likely to commit them. For instance, if you put a fence around your anger, if you deal with your anger, you are less likely to commit murder. So Jesus doesn't say the opposite of these commands. What Jesus says is he adds on to it. Jesus also talks about name calling. Perhaps you grew up with that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. So if you've ever been bullied, if you've ever been hurt by words spoken in hateful speech or in anger, words do hurt and they stay with us for a while. Not true. And in some cases, as we know, names can even kill. So what Jesus is saying is not just not to murder, but he's also saying deal with your Deal with your anger personally. Deal with your anger in your families. Deal with your anger in the church. This is important. Because when we do, we understand what it is to live as the people of God. I'm going to end with this story. There was a documentary healing from hate. And the documentary actually takes a look at racism and white, white grievance, especially male white grievance. And it's a documentary and it kind of goes through um, what they call formers. These are people who have been involved in white supremacist groups or white nationalist groups or either other Supreme groups, whether a violent gang. And these are men that have done some pretty horrible things. Some have spent time in prison. But along the way, they have realized that the hate in their hearts, the hate that they spewed, whether in person or online, the hate did not lead them anywhere but to a dead end. And so they have an organization called Healing from Hate where they actually help both themselves but also others who are trying to leave a life of nationalism or some other harmful organization or and they say it's important that what you do is you don't start with judgment. You don't start by telling the white supremacists or the white nationalists how wrong they are. What you do is you start by listening. Because quite often in their lives, they have been the recipient of someone else's anger and pain. Whether it was their abuse they received at home from a parent, or a family member, or how they got jumped again and again walking home from school. But you don't start with judgment, you start by listening. And near the end of the documentary, there's a story about Julius Long and Randy Furness. This is back in 2017 when Richard Spencer, the white nationalist, was given a to the University of Florida. And there were those that were upset about what Richard Spencer was going to say, and so there were protests. 
There were protests on either side, but that day there were more protesters against Richard Spencer. And there was a man named Randy Furness who was a neo-Nazi, and he proudly wore his white shirt with swastikas on it. And he thought to share his opinions that he would walk closely and through the anti-Richard Spencer protesting. And when he did, he was spit on and yelled at. And then somebody started to throw a punch. And there was another man there, an African-American man named Julius Long. And Julius Long was, an, was a, he was an activist. But he saw Randy, the neo-Nazi, he said, Some, somebody's got to do something. He shielded Randy, put his body on top of his, and got him out of there. That day, Randy, to one another. Let us be reconciled to each other. Let us reach out to someone that we don't agree with. Perhaps they can teach us something. But whatever you do, let's deal with it. Jesus does talk about righteousness here in the Sermon on the Mount, but perhaps it is 
a different kind of righteousness. Not one that condemns, not one that only judges, but one that actually reaches out. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit.
for the continued giving of this congregation, for the ministry of Oak Ridge, for the support of the church, and for the ways that the church is able to support uh, our community. Today we have a little extra going on. Um, we have uh, some stations set up. There's uh, one here. Thanks, Marty. There's one in the middle there, one over by Peter. Um, we're picking back up again our Pennies for Hunger collection, which we haven't done in about six months since we haven't been able to gather in person. And uh, we're also collecting, or at least letting you know about uh, a beginning collection that will be ongoing for food. So I'll say something about both of those. For Pennies for Hunger, um, the metal tins that you see are for Pennies for Hunger, and the plastic tins... Uh, um, the covers on them would be for a uh, general um, Oak Ridge offering. And for Pennies for Hunger, this is uh, something you might have seen in the e-news where um, it's kind of connected to this tradition of um, two cents a meal uh, that's been going on for a few decades. And so we, uh, it's kind of in the spirit of two cents a meal that each meal we eat, we put into a tin can that we might have at home, two cents per person per meal. Um, and in the spirit of that, we might give a little bit more now, uh, but it's that with a little, we can do a lot. With a little, we can feed people um, here in our local community and abroad. Um, and so these tins uh, represent that. There are tins you can actually take home that are back on the driveway. Um, and, uh, or if you have your own at home, you can um, begin collecting for pennies for hunger if you don't have anything today. You can, of course, put in uh, more than pennies, other coins, cash. You can write a check, put something in the memo line, or donate online as well. And the same goes for offering. Um, uh, the other thing is um, we're collecting food. This is in, uh, we're kind of helping um, in partnership with Oak Ridge United Methodist Church, um, just down the road. They are collecting, they have a, a large backpack program, actually, that's in um, schools in Northwest Guilford County. And so we're collecting um, oatmeal, peanut butter, and jelly, and plastic containers, and soup. And you can bring those, and there is a yellow lid that also fell over earlier, like many things are doing. Um, the yellow lid represents uh, the containers that will be over by the, the building of the sanctuary. So if you see that, you, if you collect these items, you can bring them to the church, find that yellow lid, put those items in that container. Um, you can speak to me, you can speak to Moni. I don't think Brooke's here today, but you can also speak to Brooke Bean about any of these details. Um, but let us pray. gifts we offer a living God be used to fix breakfast for hungry children, to shower the desperate with grace, and share the good news of the kingdom of heaven. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I went a little bit out of order. Uh, if you have pennies or, or change or um, other cash, uh, we will um, invite you now to put it in um, any of these tins here.
love to say here outside in God's beautiful creation. There at home around your kitchen table or back porch or living room or even when you watch this later during the week. Wherever you are, may you know God's love and God's peace. And may we go out this day to love and to serve the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.